Sir, it's, uh, excuse me, it's 531. Jason, do we have any ad additions or changes? We got a couple additions. So after um, number seven, we have add Addison Schrader for part-time EMS. T-R-A-D-E-R. Sorry. Okay, thank you. And then also add Derek Coates for part-time. Choate. Choate. Yeah. Choate. After for number seven as well? Correct. Adam Choate. Part-time EMS. Okay. Anybody else? And that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome. So I'm just going to, once again, just read the, uh, a few of the rules of procedure to make sure that we're all, we're all on board with this. These were adopted uh, May 15th by the select board. Comment by public or members of the public must be addressed to the chair once they've identified themselves and not to any individual of the public or um, of the body. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. Members of the public must introduce themselves before speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they may be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Members of the public shall be afforded a maximum of two minutes each time they speak on a topic, and I'll do my best to try and adhere to that. Uh, so, minutes. The minutes of August 7th. So I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of August 7th uh, with one correction. Um, Can we get a motion and a second first? I'll second. And we have a second by Judy and motion by Chris. Go ahead, Chris. So on um, August 7th, on the second page, um, the errors and omissions certificate, um, there wasn't five of us voting on that. Um, so it should reflect 301 with one acceptance ah. exemption. Thank you. Thank you. I have one change as well under number seven. Number seven was the, uh, the Lamont County Conservation District came and asked us to uh, forgive their fee of $130.20. And there was nobody here that night representing the Lamont County Conservation District. And I remember I, I made the comment that in the future, if someone's coming, to a select board meeting and they represent an organization and they're asking for the select board to um, rescind that that fee um, that there should be somebody here representing them so i just like the minutes to reflect that okay <clears throat> any other changes nope. all those in favor of approving the minutes from august 7th aye, aye. Minutes from August 14th. I would move the uh, minutes uh, of August 14th. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Laura, motion by Chris. By the way, August 14th was our informational meeting in regards to the town manager, town administrator. Any discussion? No. All those in favor of approving the minutes from August 14th? Aye. 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 Thank you. So those are both unanimous, Judy. Thank you. Uh, new business. Change the select board meeting from September 5th to September 11th. Uh, September 5th is a, a bit of a problem because two of us will not be there that night. I will not be there. Judy will not be there. So I'm going to suggest that we move it till the following Monday. Tuesday is the day right after Labor Day as well. Not that I'm thinking that's a huge problem, but yeah, we can go till Monday, September 11th. So I would I would move to change the select board meeting from September 5th to September 11th, but also included in the motion that um, we authorize Vice Chair Don McDowell uh, to sign be, be able to sign warrants on September 5th on behalf of the board. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Um, just a little bit of concern, seeing that we will have gone through an election. 
it's just not that big of a deal. Right. Are you going all week? And that's, yeah, I am. And that's yeah, the other reason is because, because it is the first meeting okay. after the election. Yeah. It would make sense for us to be here. Okay, so hopefully, I, I hate to delay it, but yeah. if there's nobody here, nobody's here. Right. It's that time of year. Okay. Um, Tina, do the warrants need to be signed on that particular day? When you are you thinking about coming in Tuesday or something? It's just that week I'd like them signed. Otherwise, vendors are waiting three weeks to get paid. Okay. So if it can't be on Monday, you could come Tuesday or whatever. Monday is Labor Day. Oh, then but I don't I, expect you to come on Monday. Well, but I could come on Monday and just sign them and get that done. You said you're not going to be here. Right. Um, you, you could if you wanted to. I can leave them out. We can talk about that later. But okay. as long as they're signed in that week. Yeah. Okay. Procedurally, then, what would happen if neither person could do it? I just wouldn't get paid for a week. The, would the administrator step in? No, it has to be. Just, I'm just, this it is has to be the knowledge. select board. No, it has to be a member of the select board that signs the warrants. It can't be the administrator. So it would either be they would, uh, vendors would wait three weeks to get paid oh, yeah. or, uh, you know, somebody can come in and sign on behalf of the whole board. Okay. But I, yeah, I can come in prior and sign them. Okay. Could Chris or I come in just for procedure here? I'm not. I, I don't care who comes in as long as at least one of you. Do. Just for future if we need to appoint right. somebody. Okay, so that the vendors aren't waiting. That was for my own information. Thank you. Okay. So we have a, mo we have a motion to change the select board meeting from September 5th to <coughs> September 11th and to authorize Don McDowell to sign the warrants. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that is unanimous as well. Um, discuss the Walton Road Bridge project. So this has been on the books to be completed this construction season. And due to the demand of getting materials and the flooding that happened in July, the contractor reached out to us a few weeks ago asking if there is a possibility of postponing this project until the springtime. Uh, we're knocking on September's door. It's about a 120 day project. We're gonna be getting into inclement weather, potentially snow, freezing temperatures, and also the school bus traffic will be out and about here in a few weeks. Um, so we did talk to, I talked to the engineer, ran it by him, and he's good with it and the biggest concern that we had is what if something happens to the bridge this winter and the contractor who is here tonight uh, is able to speak to this as well is confident that they can put some plates down if anything was to happen with the decking of the bridge over the winter they could plate it with uh, some steel plates so it'd be still be passable as far as our grant goes that's good till the end of 2024 so the money's still good uh, that won't have a effect that on it. So, I don't know if there's, uh, do you want to come up and speak at all? Okay. <laughs> Could you introduce yourself, please? Mark Cody, President of Bowling Cody. You're right here in Morrisville, your contractor for the Walton Road Bridge. Uh, yeah, we have, that was our concern was, should something happen to the deck? Um, we put the plate in that, that, that's in there now and if we had to have we have plates in our yard so it's not a big deal it's just would be you know you have to shut the bridge down for a day to do it if, if it was to develop another hole okay and we have no reason to think that the failure of the bridge is imminent for any reason we don't yeah structurally it's well, it's just the deck, so structurally, yeah, yeah, yeah it so is a problem, but the beams are fine. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure this has a lot to do with our wonderful weather this summer. I'm, I'm sure you're delayed like everybody. Well, not only that, the flooding has a lot of people calling to get repairs done. Yeah, a lot of people have small bridges, and they, can't, they haven't been home because they can't get across their bridge. And so, so we're getting calls. We're still getting calls every every day so is it reasonable to expect this would be a, a high priority maybe a first priority in the spring yeah we'll start april 15th okay rain or shine rain or shine yeah and get it get it done because school is just uh, what, a month and a half 
yeah. the second week if, in June. Usually yeah. It's out. Okay. So, you know, and, and if there's a, a change order that would require an extension of time, it won't impact as hard as it will this fall and winter because it's, you know, there's some things that are going to get uncovered that no one has seen yet. It's called Pandora's box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mark. Any technical question? Um, April 15th is asked, will be after our, our next uh, March Time. meeting, correct? So, does this in any way affect the budget or any? No, the money, we already have the money, the money set aside. There. We have a grant and then we have money in our bridge fund. So, so the money's there. So, it's, that's what I'm just curious since it's technically next year. Next Jason, we don't need to take any action on this. This is just. Discussion information. Correct. Okay. Okay. Chris. Thank you. No, I think it makes sense. Uh, you know, if we're looking at 120 days out. We don't know what the weather's going to look like, and and um, I think that we should err on the side of of um, safety here. And as long as if there's any issues with the deck, um, you you can play it without any issues, to, regardless of the weather. I right. I think that uh, it makes sense. Yeah. Particularly if we don't know what we uncover. Right. And with it frozen, Mother Nature's already yeah. helped you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and don't go there. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you, Mark. Than it has been yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, number three approve Pike Industries to pave Center Road, Morrisville Park and Ride, and the Pleasant Street parking lot. And it's my understanding from looking through the packet that this is money that's already budgeted. Yeah, is that this, correct? The money's already money's already uh, set aside for this. We have it. Um, this is kind of just a procedure thing for audit purposes to get your approval. They gave us this uh, bid back in April, and we've been just waiting on them to do the work. They're promising us by September 15th. I promise to use that you loosely, but they're saying by September 15th they'll be here to do the work. So, okay. And one of these, the Pleasant Street parking lot, getting that paved is very important to the Hutchins Street project as well. Correct. So Pike's going to be they they're somewhat able to promise September 15th. I don't know. If I, no I, promise is probably not the right word, That's but right. they're saying Somewhere. September 15th, whether it's them or a subcontractor. Okay. Great. Has there been a com a conversation about the priority, our pro priorities? As far as the three projects? Yeah. There hasn't, but when mm -hmm. they do get here, we have some coordination to do with the post office. Okay. Because uh, mail trucks are coming in, so yeah. we're going to try to, it's going to be a three day cycle where they're going to hit everything, but I'm not sure which mm -hmm. one's going to get done first. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure how much notice we're going to have, I guess, is what I'm saying. They may okay. be, we'll be here tomorrow. We need to give them at least like a day and a half notice at the post office so we can coordinate appropriately. But three days is the anticipated turnaround. Yeah, they're hoping oh, they can be yeah, in and out pretty quick. That's, yeah. So Jason, this was this was never signed back when um, this bid was accepted by the town. It was never endorsed, I guess, by the select board. Is that correct? Correct. So really, um, the advantage for us to do this now, you know, later than sooner, um, is that it locks in the price, which they've already bid. So the, the, sorry, the price was locked in. The price is locked in right. through the highway superintendent, so. Okay. All right. Because the price of petroleum's gone up a lot, so good. All right. Yeah, that's great. Well, I would entertain a motion. I would so move to... Uh, to go ahead and accept the bid for the um, Center Road, Morrisville Park and Ride and Pleasant Street parking lots uh, from Pike Industries for the value of $116,445. And uh, no, I will second. Okay, I've got a motion by Chris, second by Laura. Any other discussion? I think so. Okay, all those in favor of approving Pike Industries to pave Center Road, Morrisville Park and Ride, and Pleasant Street parking lot for $116,000 and $116,445. Aye. 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 That is unanimous, Judy. Number four, proof fireworks application from North Star for the Bishop Marshall School celebration on September 29th. 
So uh, included in your packet, just a standard application, uh, North Star Fireworks will be the company doing the display. We've... Uh, 25th anniversary, in case anybody's wondering. Of Bishop Marshall? It says 25th anniversary homecoming. Great. So do I? Do I, would, I, um, I would make a motion to accept the application for the, fire, the fireworks permit um, by Bishop Marshall School. I think they go by a different name now. Um, oh, yeah, they do. For uh, September 29th, uh, 2023. And because of the uh, signatures on the permit, I would uh, include in the motion um, that uh, Vice Chair Don McDowell sign on behalf of the selector. Do I have a second? Um, yes, and, but I'm going to ask, do we need to get the correct name? Because it's not correct that they did change their name. So we have a motion and we have a second for so discussion. Yeah, the correct name. Is that important? What did it change to? I'm trying to remember. Change to the All Saints, All Saints Catholic All Church, Church. Yeah. Uh, Catholic yeah. School. Yeah. Um, um, and I don't know, to be honest, I've not accounted this before. So um, if Nostar is worried about it, I would have thought that they would submit a notification I was thinking more, for it, but more of our police and fire, know. just for technicalities. But we can, we can check with the school tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing is the signature on the second page, but if we got to change the applicant name, it's easy enough to do. Okay. By the way, I should have already asked this. Do we have any concerns mm -hmm. about this? No concerns. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? So all those in favor of approving the fireworks application from North Star for the Bishop Marshall School, previously named, school celebration on September 29th, 2023. Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Number four, number five. Appoint Dan McLaughlin to the Lamoille County Planning Commission. And I guess uh, I, I would entertain a motion first, and, um, and then I'm going to ask Dan to come forward. So I would, uh, I would go ahead and make the motion to appoint Dan McLaughlin for one year uh, to the Lamoille County Planning Commission Board of Directors. Do I have a second? Yes. Sorry, second. So we have a second. A motion by Chris, a second by... Laura, Dan, would you mind coming forward and uh, just explaining your background? Hi, Dan McLaughlin, Marshall. Um, I don't have much background. Um, I have a background in uh, regional planning commi uh, commissions. I uh, was on the regional co planning commission over in New Hampshire um, and at the Lakes Region com Planning Commission. Um, and I've been in town for now about 11 years, and I just thought it was a good position to be in. Um, I've heard a lot of different stories about what the Planning Commission is and what the Planning Commission isn't, and um, also the relationship between the town and um, the, the uh, commission. Um, I think as a liaison between the two places, it's imperative to make sure that one reports to both sides. Um, and also uses it as a resource as opposed to just something across the street, you know. Um, also, um, I really think that Morrisville has a lot of leadership within the um, county and, and uh, has a lot of effect on it. So I think a good relationship with that uh, council is a good idea. And, uh, I, I, I think I can do a good job. It and, sounds to me like you do have some, some background. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was, it was it was always an interesting thing. It was the other town that I that I represented was a very small town, uh, around a thousand people over in uh, it was the town of Alexandria, New Hampshire. Okay, so great. If anybody knows where that is, they're doing a lot better than most. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think there's an opportunity here, especially as we go forward. I know we're going to have a new board, and we're going to have new reasons to request help from them, as well as. Um, advice from us to them uh, for guidance in their plans and I think that's how the uh, town plan and the um, county plan interact anyway so around that type of planning I think I could do a lot of different things so I'm interested anyway and that's half of it I guess that sure is yeah well thank you Dan for stepping sure. forward yeah we well, certainly I appreciate, appreciate it
Any, Thank you. any questions? Uh, just to care, did you did you pick the one year or? Uh, no, I, 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 I didn't know. I, I do them all for one year. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. I just unless, yeah. unless the board decides differently, yeah. that's been the practice. I just I just saw the two, three years mm -hmm. that I'd ask. Well, if, I, if I'm lucky, you won't throw me out before that. There top. you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Any further discussion? No. So all those in favor of appointing Dan McLaughlin to the LCPC, Lamont County Planning Commission, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Number six, appoint Angela Cody to the Morristown Conservation Commission. Let me just get a motion here first. I, do whatever I you like. I would move to um, appoint Angela Cody to the Morristown Conservation Commission. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Is there a term uh, related to this? Uh, Ron can answer that for you. That can be decided a, later. Let me get a second. I'll second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's we have a motion good. by Chris and a second by Laura. Um, go ahead, Ron. All right. I'm Ron Stankliff, Morristown Conservation Chair. We interviewed uh, Angela at our last meeting, which was last week. But prior to that, she submitted to all of us a resume of her past. She is a native from Morristown, but however, recently moved back from Massachusetts and expressed an interest to join with us. We presently have three vacancies, and uh, this is the first attempt to try and gain another member. So I appreciate your moving on up forward. Is Angela present in the audience tonight? No. We, I've never gone through that custom. Okay. I basically come to represent the commission. But we have our procedure of how we do this, which is to, uh, we like to have the uh, people that are interested attend a few meetings get a copy of our bylaws and be familiar with them, and then uh, submit a resume, and then we like to have a little visit with them. <laughs> so I assume this is a recommendation of the entire commission? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Ron, is yeah. there a Thank term you. Uh, tied to her appointment? Is it a five-year term, is it a two-year term? Uh, I would recommend that we look at filling uh, the expired, not uh, the unfilled term of uh, Kristen Conley, who resigned. Okay. I believe she was due out in uh, 2025. Okay. So at that time, then it have to come back before uh, select board for reappointment. So she's filling the spot till the yes. 2025. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I guess. Um, as long as we're talking about this, would it be appropriate to um, amend the motion to say yes. that to fill the unexpired term of Kristen Connolly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? With this yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was just going to look up and see what the term was for Kristen Connolly. I think with just her name, I'll be all set. Let me just see. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, uh, that term actually expires 2024, Ron. 2024. March 2024. So March of 24? Yeah, March 2024. Okay, so it's. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, thanks, Ron. Thanks. Uh, do we so I have a motion. Any other discussion? Okay, so all those in favor of appointing Angela Cody to the Morristown Conservation Commission to fill the seat of Kristen Connolly until 2024. Say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Approve the hiring of Jason Tallman as a full-time EMS. Bill, would you like to come forward? Hi, good evening. Uh, Bill Mates, EMS Chief. Um, we did uh, two days' worth of interviews last week, uh, three for our uh, open full-time position and uh, three for the uh, part-time uh, vacancy that we've uh, been carrying uh, since Kelly Mayo moved back over to the volunteer roster. Um, 
Uh, Jason Tom is a uh, current part-time employee of our agency. Before uh, He's actually devoted 11 years to Morristown Rescue uh, uh, and now Morristown EMS. Um, uh, he's well-known in the community. He's got deep <coughs> Lamoille County roots. Uh, he is a uh, nationally registered Vermont licensed emergency medical technician. He's completed 50% of his testing uh, successfully to be an advanced EMT. Um, he has scheduled the other 50%, which is the uh, the written exam. Um, and uh, we would like to bring Jason into that full-time slot um, as uh, outlined in your motion there uh, with a start date of uh, September 4th. September 4th. And he has uh, said that he would, uh, part of part of this, one of the conditions is that he would obtain his nationally registered Vermont licensed yes. advanced EMT? Yes, as within, an advanced EMT. Within 12 He's, months? Yes. Yeah, okay. we put that contingency on there because he still does have to complete testing. So would you like that as part of the motion? Um, I have to does it need to be part of the motion, Jason? Yes, or? yes it does. It okay. does? Okay. Yes. That would be fine. Okay, great. Why well, will entertain a motion. Well, I, we have two other individuals, too, that you wanted to talk about as well. Yeah, those are for the open part-time uh, positions. So let's just do this one first, and then we can do those separately. Okay. Okay. So I would make the motion to uh, approve the hiring of Jason Tallman as a full-time EMT, the rate of pay of $20.99 an hour with the condition that he obtain his nationally registered Vermont licensed advanced EMT within 12 months from the date of a full-time status, which would start on 9-4, September 4, 2023. I'll second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion as read, say aye. 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 So, this, so all of, does this fill all of our full time? Yes. EMS spots? Yes. Great. Now I wrote down some names here. Uh, we have an addition here: Addison Trader and Adam Choates. Uh, Derek Choate, yeah. Um, Sorry. Uh, so, uh, apologize for the late add-ons. Uh, both of these accepted offers uh, uh, mid to late afternoon, and we wanted to uh, get them get them approved, and so we could start doing orientation. Um, we uh, we interviewed three people for our open part-time slot. Uh, moving Jason from part-time to full-time actually now gives us two uh, open part-time slots. Um, so uh, we would like to uh, we would like to add Addison Schroda. She's an advanced EMT. Um, currently works down in the EMS District Six, which is the Barry area. Um, uh, we'd like to add her as a part-time advanced EMT. She's nationally registered Vermont licensed, um, uh, and uh, comes uh, comes to us uh, with experience and. Uh, uh, recommendations uh, specifically from a, a instructor that I've taught with and I respect. Um, so we would like to bring Addison on. Uh, do we want to go right into the second one, or so? This is Addison Trader as a part-time part-time advanced EMT. Okay. Uh, at a starting rate of 19.42 an hour. Do we need to do? Both part time separate, or can we do them together? Yeah, like so. okay. So, so Addison Trader at nineteen dollars and forty two cents as Schroeder. Schroeder. Schroeder right? Why do I keep saying Trader? Judy, Judy help me out. Schroeder. The name is pronounced Schrader. 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 Okay. It's spelled like Schroeder, but it's pronounced Schrader. Okay. 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 And she is a part time EM. Advanced, Advanced EMC. Okay, I'll make a motion that we. Uh, it's, uh, except the hiring of Addison Sh uh, Schrader, part-time advanced EMT at a rate of 19.42 uh, cents starting. Uh, I have not discussed that with her. Okay. Uh, well, starting when, soon. Yeah, <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as available. Okay, as soon as available. Yeah. Okay, it'll work. Also, Do I have a second? Motion. Okay. Any further discussion? No, so all those in favor of hiring Addison Schrader as a part-time advanced EMT at $19.42 as soon as she's available. Aye. aye. Say aye. Aye. That's unanimous, Judy. Next. Um, 
The other part-time open position uh, created by the uh, Jason Tallman promotion, uh, we would like to bring in Derek Choate. This is a bit of a homecoming for Derek Choate. Uh, when he was a brand new EMT, he was a volunteer member of this squad many years ago. Uh, he, count, he now comes back to us as a nationally registered Vermont licensed paramedic. Uh, he is also a uh, Vermont licensed instructor coordinator that I've taught several classes with over the years. Uh, uh, Derek uh, accepted an offer this afternoon at an hourly rate of 22.48 with a start date of September 4th. And what would the position be again? Uh, Part-time uh, EMS paramedic. Okay. Um, is, is there any teaching that we need to add in? Will he have any teaching uh, responsibilities? Uh, well, uh, that's, uh, Derek and I will discuss that Down. as, uh, as okay. yeah. Well, I'll make the motion to um, uh, hire Derek Choate um, as a part-time EMS paramedic at an hourly, hourly rate of 2248 uh, with a start date of September 4th. I'll second. Thank you. Judy, you good with all that? I'm good with all of that. Okay, any discussion? So all those in favor of hiring Derek Choate at $22.48 as a part-time EMS paramedic with the start date of September 4th, 2023. Say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, before you sit down, yeah. can I just get clarification? A start date on Jason Tolman? September 4th. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to number eight, discuss the longevity play, pay plan. Is this in regards to the last motion? Yes. Come on up. Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So I brought it up several times, and Bill's one hell of a guy, and we should be proud to have him. I want to know how all this is getting paid for, and is other communities going to be involved in the future? That's what we need. Morristown should not be on the hook for a million dollar budget. So I, I can, can I, yeah, can I hold say on. a couple of things yeah. first? Hold on. Yeah, okay, finish. We should not be on the hook for a million dollar budget or whatever it is for our EMS when it's going over the border. So it just thank you very much, Tom. Okay. I agree. Um, we just need to do Bill. something. Those other communities have to pitch in. I agree. Bill is, Bill is doing a fantastic yeah. job. And I would just say that this, could, this is a conversation that has been going on for months. Uh, I know the town of Elmore has stepped up and is starting to pay for our EMS services. And I know that we're starting to bill other towns. But Bill, would you like to add anything to that? So it's uh, not like we're we're um, not on so the total. So EMS as a member of EMS District Four. Uh, just as a quick primer, uh, there are 13 EMS districts in the state of Vermont. Also 13 districts in the Hunger Games, but there's a correlation <laughs> there somewhere. Um, Don't go uh, there. <laughs> the um, uh, there are 13 EMS districts in Vermont. Uh, Lamar County and a little piece of uh, Caledonia County are EMS District Four. EMS District 4 has a written mutual aid agreement that all the agencies are signatories to. Uh, and that provides, us, uh, that provides us mutual aid when we need it. We also reciprocate that mutual aid uh, when uh, other agencies need it. Our colleagues in Stowe at Northern EMS, Hardwick. Um, we also provide a, a goodly number of paramedic intercept services. Um, those we've just recently begun uh, to charge $250, which is a fairly established rate in this region, not necessarily the district, but the northern part of Vermont, uh, uh, for, those, for those intercepts. And that is billable to the agency requesting uh, the, uh, the paramedic service from us, not the patient. Um, because our paramedic getting on their ambulance allows them to now bill at a higher level of care. Uh, so uh, uh, I, uh, I, I don't disagree with Mr. Cody, uh, you know, we, but we do our mutual aid uh, in response to a written mutual aid agreement 
that uh, this a a agency uh, and by extrapolation, the town is a signatory to. Uh, that includes all the providers, uh, all the EMS uh, service providers within District 4. Um, so, um, yeah, um, and as, as for our budget, uh, I would respectfully remind uh, the board uh, that uh, uh, our total budget for, for EMS is approximately 800,000. Uh, 500,000 of that is burdened to the taxpayer. Uh, we bring in approximately $300,000 a year into the town general fund. So essentially for every $3 uh, uh, that the town invests in emergency medical services, uh, uh, which is actually the reality is it's point of, point of emergency health care is what we're doing. Um, uh, when uh, for every three dollars the town invests in that, about a dollar comes back uh, through the insurance reimbursement uh, that we get from uh, both Corey and Tina's hard work in getting that, the, getting the insurance claims filed. Okay, thank you, thank sure. you for addressing yeah, just a that. Question for you, sir: sure. When you bill out the two hundred and fifty dollars um, for the, your um, staff to get on somebody else's ambulance you you're guaranteed that money as soon as they step on that regardless of right. billing practices or whatever right. uh, if, if we if we make the intercept and make patient contact uh we're billing them and this and this mutual aid um, agreement is not um just germane to your uh, ambulance service um, fire safety has a very similar um, mutual aid uh, agreement with other towns. I believe police does as well. Is that correct, Jason? Correct. Um, it is part of the group effort to provide uh, public safety across the board. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm gonna move. Thank you very okay. much, Bill. Thank you. I'm gonna move on to number eight. Um, so discuss the longevity pay plan. Um, I, I'm going to move on just because the motion or the uh, agenda item was about hiring. It wasn't about the EMS budget. So I asked this first speaker who came to the microphone if it, their comments were about the motion, and it wasn't. And so we, I just want to just move on, if you don't mind. So, so number eight, discuss the longevity pay plan. So I have some comments on this. Jason, do you have any comments you wanted to add to start this? I don't believe so. We just wanted to kind of get it out there. It's been talked about, you know, for the last few months. Not that we need to make any decisions tonight, but we can have it. We can speak about it, get some input from the community, and maybe put it on the next meeting or the one after that. So this is on the agenda. I think uh, certainly in part. I was going to say mostly, but I'll just say in part because we want to make sure that. The community knows that there has been a lot of work and discussion and certainly thought put into the longevity pay plan. It was a big discussion back in the spring. Um, and I think it's safe to say that it mostly has to do with how we compensate our employees. And uh, there's been a lot of talk about COLA. And uh, these last two years, these last 24 months have COLA has put this town and other towns in a very uh, stressful situation, if, uh, if I can use that word, um, and has brought much attention to the way that we do put um, a pay plan together. And I think we've come to understand the shortcomings of basing it on COLA. If uh, COLA is going to have major swings up and down, it, it puts a burden on the town to match those great up and down swings. And, I think, uh, I'll just speak for myself, but I think it's true of, well, I'll just speak for myself. But uh, I think uh, I think it's shown its weakness, and I think it's something we need to get away from. We need to we need to move away from coal, and there's been a lot talked about moving away. And there's been a lot talked about, as a second scenario, having a floor and a ceiling, having some kind of cap, having some kind of maximum and minimum as to how much the, uh, uh, salary increases could be changed from year to year and that will certainly take these major upswings these major up and downs and make it more like a uh, a much more a much smaller sign curve if, if I can use that that terminology uh, 
Um, but it does, it does still bind us to coal, at least my understanding of how we might put a uh, floor and a, a ceiling in. I, I'm sure there's different ways of doing it. I would also like all of us to begin to think about a third way to do this. And a third way to do this is to um, not be so tied to COLA, but rather develop a budget and look forward so that we have certainty in our budget. So that what we can do is we can negotiate with, and there's lots of examples of this that, that happen this way. So rather than tying it directly with COLA, negotiate with our police union, negotiate with our highway department, which we're presently doing, um, and tie their raises to um, some agreed upon amount of new money. I'll just say right now, this is the way schools have negotiated with their teachers for decades, um, longer than most of us have been alive in this room. And uh, the nice thing about it is if we do that, if we did come to some kind of an agreement where we had a two or three year agreement, three years seems pretty reasonable, we could, if we, if we did have such a, um, agreement in place right now, we would know exactly how much the budget was going to go up this year because we would have agreed to a new money value. We would know exactly how much the budget was going to go up next year, not tied to COLA, just tied to the agreement. And we would know how much, if it was a three-year agreement, how much the budget would go up two years from now. That gives us an opportunity to look forward. It gives us an opportunity to strategically plan going forward. We know what we have, um, what we're investing in our employees, and um, it just it it it's not going to make it's not going to make the curve completely flat, but it's going to get very close to that. And also. Uh, not only buy some certainty for the board, the administration, but buy some certainty for the employees as well. I've stood on the other side of this idea for my entire career, close to 40 years, and it was, uh, um, you know, we have to negotiate a contract no matter what, but it would make sense to end up with something that's negotiated that has a certainty in the future. COLA, in my opinion, is not the way to go. We've got to get away from it. Um, but I'm not sure a cap and a, or a ceiling and a floor is the way to go. So I just kind of throw that out there as a, as a, as a possibility. And more importantly, to let the public know that we're all thinking about this and uh, it, it hasn't gone away, it hasn't disappeared. It's still very important and uh, it's something that we're going to need to deal with here. Hopefully after next Tuesday, after this budget, uh, hopefully we'll be done with the budget next week. And if we are, it's something that we can, we can begin to tackle and discuss. So those are my thoughts on this. I would have to agree. I know uh, I was pushing for a cap on the uh, ceiling, but that was working within the frame that we had currently. Um, I totally agree. I think this is the time to rethink it and restructure so we can move forward and not try to fix stuff. Because I think the what we've all found is that we're living in a very different time and that, um, I mean, you know, California had an earthquake and a hurricane. Cra craziness is going on, so um, which is going to affect the economy. And so I think whatever we can do to bring stability and security to everyone, to the taxpayers and to the staff, is huge. Because this is turmoil has been horrible for all of us. <laughs> so I hope you know. I hope the uh, staff, all of our staff, will work with us to come to. Uh, something that we can all live with and then and more importantly be happy with and you know secure with so i think that's a great idea well we'll as we start working at here <coughs> chris yeah i um you know you and i have talked um, extensively about uh, the importance of uh, predictability in yeah. our budgeting uh, cycles um, I had talked with um, our human resources director and, and uh, about reaching out to different communities and she sent all of us an email showing, you know, basically an a la carte menu of just about every town um, that she solicited, which is quite a few, 
all doing it differently. Yeah. Most of it tied to a, some sort of factor of cola uh, with a base. I guess my only question is that um, with you know two different uh, unions and different expiration dates of those union contracts, how do you fit in a one size fits all when you're trying to negotiate two different contracts in your expiration date? You know, the advantage of a COLA with a cap and a, a floor and a fixed step is, is that um, it leaves that basis point within the budget for negotiation, but also flows through the expiration date of, of a multi-year contract of two different unions. So I think that, you know, we should, you know, once we get through uh, this budget, um, that we need to seriously contemplate both those scenarios as we walk down the path, because we're not dealing with just one union, where we can say as of, you know, July 1st of next year, you know, we're going to negotiate this because we're in the beginnings of the highway budget, uh, the highway contract, and we have two more years on the police contract, and how is this going to um, affect, and is there any guarantees two years down the road that the police are going to agree to that? Yeah. So I, I just say that as a contemplation point. <coughs> that um, as we begin those discussions, that we bear both of these scenarios in mind. I do think predictability is an important piece of it. So just one thought that I would have is, well, two thoughts. Number one, I, I, I don't want to send the message that I think past select boards made some huge mistake when it came to COLA because none of those boards had any opportunity to know that the last two fiscal years would be such a you know tremendous increase in, in COLA and inflation. So. Uh, note that it did work very well for quite a few years, which is the reason it stayed in place as long as it did. Of course, one way to do that is to perhaps, uh, in response to what Chris said, one way to uh, you take out that uh, uh, the, the the fact that uh, different contracts are being negotiated at different times is to you know try and get them synchronized so that maybe. Uh, Maybe the contracts come come due at the same time, yeah. so. But that obviously begs other concerns that I think we can all kind of come up with. But, anyways, questions, comments, discussion? Yeah, come on up. Uh, Jerry Throne, Morrisville. Um, the idea of uh, trying to uh, coordinate the contracts so that they're all starting and ending at the same time sounds nice, but I think what happens is that uh, when that occurs is that uh, should the unions decide that they uh, are going to go out on strike, you have multiple um, uh, services that are being affected rather than just one. Uh, so I, I just mentioned that, that it's something to consider. It, it certainly gives uh, the, uh, the workers, the, the union, whether union or non-union, it gives them uh, negotiating power. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We have somebody up on the screen. Chris, is that Chris, Judy? Yeah, this is uh, Chris Clement, um, former Morristown employee. Uh, the only thing that I want to mention is it's my understanding that the longevity pay policy was put into place to keep uh, the non-union employees on par with the union contracts. Uh, it sounds like the conversation for the longevity pay policy has geared toward, has been geared towards the PD and the highway department who are both unionized. Um, so I'm not sure why the non-union employee aren't employees aren't being you know the topic of discussion here since uh, this really has to do with uh, their equitable increase in salary um, because they don't have a contract to negotiate with with the unions. So if you could speak to that. Yes, definitely, Chris. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that was implied, but I, it wasn't explicit. You're absolutely right. I mean, the longevity pay policy is really more tied to our non-union workers than it is to our unionized employees that, that have, have contracts that, that dictate their pay schedules. So thank you. I guess what I was saying was that all three would be built on a very similar concept. 
Yeah, it's, it's a, there's a lot of work to be done because we've got to look at a lot of, um, you know, with try to encompass everybody to get some equability and stability. So um, it's certainly on my radar, the non-union people. So we'll, but thank you for bringing that up because it's, um, that is why the COLA was important for so many years. So we will keep that in mind, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Well, Chris is on there. Uh, I hope Introduce that, yourself, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Tom Cludia. I, uh, and I'll get to the caller here in a second, but Chris had a lot of concerns on his resignation letter that I hope that you, once you board looked at that, that some of those concerns are gonna be addressed because they're serious concerns. And, and if they had been Dealt I'm with. going to ask you to deal yeah. with the lunch They were dealt table. with before he yeah. might still be here. All right, uh, another uh, on this proposal. I w if you would uh, get rid of COLA, as you say, and work on that, I think the important step then would be who is negotiating for the town? And who would you get to negotiate for the town? Because I've been told who you who does the negotiation with the unions now would be the the uh, uh, finance director, the TA, and the HR, which I believe would be serious conflict of interest to be negotiating contracts with people who are either going to be below you or above you and you're working. So who would negotiate for the for the town? against yes. these unions? It's a great, great question. And the answer would be, um, thinking to my own past experience, is certainly yes. the town administrator or town ma manager, you know, going so down the road a little bit, would be the key person representing administration. And the select board might have membership on that negotiating team. Perhaps the select board would choose to have a member or two members on that team, that negotiating team, that would then sit okay. down with whichever union is being negotiated with yeah it, so that would be a, a possibility of getting a uh, a contract a lawyer that that's what he <laughs> they do right they, they they negotiate because i mean i think it's a great idea as long uh, you know it's the people aren't caught being paid having have, having, having been a yeah. chief negotiator for 25 years for yeah. Lamoille South, I can tell you yeah. we avoided that scenario Okay. every time we went into contract negotiations. But I will say there are some large districts in this state that, that do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It tends to get very confrontational. It's also very expensive. Um, I think it's, you know, obviously it would be much better if everyone could just sit down and have a somewhat congenial conversation about this and uh, and and get it done. That that's the way to go. But if it should happen to become become so adversarial that they can't talk to each other, then then you would start looking at hiring lawyers to represent the different sides. But I would hope it would never come to that. Well, we, how about using the league, uh, cities and towns, to, to get involved not only with this negotiation but also getting us. A town manager. So the, the league, the Mont League of Cities and Towns does not provide that service, Tom. And um, okay, not we for had, contract negotiations. And we we invited no. them to the table in terms of being part of the the town manager, town administrator, yeah. uh, administrator uh, forum, and they said that's not in our wheelhouse. We don't get involved in that. We are a resource to communities, but we're not intimately involved in the mechanics of a municipality. So they are, they are, they are a resource, but they're not part of the negotiating. They, that's not a service they provide. Well, they, they do provide a service to help find a manager. That's clearly listed on their website. Um, but they, yeah. don't, they don't get involved in the day-to-day -day of the negotiating part of the, the contracts. So they'll help provide a search okay to get applicants but well, they do right. and and that's a paid service we could pay them to help us um search so for they, manager but they don't uh write the contracts and they don't get into the but they could 
give you names of somebody who who does that, who negotiates for towns. Well, we uh, could find, I mean, well, they could, yeah. And they could find, provide names for town managers if and when we. And it's, it's a. Uh, and that, that process is already. That has begun. Oh, yeah. Great news. And, okay. And if we move to a town manager form of government, the yeah. town manager is going to be in the lead on any negotiations with a oh. union contract. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's finding one that might be the problem. And I think that's that they would be able to help a, a great deal. Well, it, it, that's, that's what they sign up for. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and, yeah. you know, we're, again, Good. we'll research, Good. you know, uh, again, this is a work in progress. Yes. And whoever we're working with, you know, will. There will be lots of discussions about what, how we're going to go forward. And uh, again, we're not reinventing the wheel here. There are lots of uh, contracts out there that we can reference and, and get some basis. So we're, you know, uh, which we'll research. And, you know, I too have a huge negotiating background. Right. Uh, and I have to say, you know, having negotiated with the big boys, yeah. you know, Radio City and Madison Square Gardens. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting because yeah. once you bring the big boys in, <laughs> they, they, they can. Yeah. They're, well, it's encouraging. It, it's encouraging, Don, that you're looking at getting rid of this long term, this whatever that longevity pay policy. I wish you could just change the name to begin with, but whatever. And to, to be seriously looking at something like that, that the taxpayers could. Uh, feel like they're getting a, a fair shot at this, and it, it, it's encouraging. And I hope we continue the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And I would just add, you know, ideally, there is that communication between the board and its administrative representative and the employees, and they get a chance to listen to each other directly, rather than bringing some outsider in who really has no relationship with the town and it's just the, kind of like the hired gun um, that that doesn't vote as well I would argue one thing I remember excuse me the one thing I remember with the talk with the town manager when we had the town manager from Stowe here was his job and in, in, in his to say no to people and I'm telling you this board has a problem saying no and and uh, we all as a, just a uh, natural uh, way of things, have difficulty saying no. And for you guys to say no to your employees right here, I know it's difficult. A town manager, that's his job, just say no. H Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we have two hands up. So Paula, Paula Beatty just said hello. Okay. Oh. So hello, Paula. Okay, so that's for hello. the next one. Hello, I just wanted to share um, uh, some feedback on VLCT's process. So when we started looking for a town administrator, I did reach out to VLCT to utilize their resources and they do provide a service. Um, they don't, but they didn't have anyone that was available. Um, and so they gave me an individual's name that even up till last week I was communicating with to see um, you know, what his availability was, um, and he, his schedule was full. So I just wanted to jump in there and say, um, it is a resource through VLCT. It's just a matter, um, if they have available, um, personnel to help. And when we were the two or three times that I've worked, worked, uh, reached out to them, they've not had anyone available to assist us in the process. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Carly, is that Kathy? Kathy, Kathy Chafee? Mm -hmm. Kathy? Hi. Um, I have to write my questions down because I forget. <laughs> um, how many employees are non-union? And what other questions do you have, Kathy? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, what, what are your other questions? No, that's just the only question I have is how many employees do we have that are non-union? Okay, Paula? EMS and town or the offices. Paula, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Six. sorry. It's a little difficult to uh, do this on my phone. I should have done it through Zoom. Um, 
we have the general government, which is, there's 12, um, and then you have the um, EMS staff, which are five full-time, five part-time, so there's 10 there. And then we have um, a non-union employee at the, um, a full-time non-union employee at the police department, as well as a part-time um, employee at the police department. So I think in all we have like 20 seven i'd have to count them but um it's just currently it's the two at the police department the ems staff and the general government staff that are non-union employees plus three from the highway oh three non-union highway oh, yeah. yep. uh, the superintendent and the two foremen right. oh, okay 27 yeah. so I got the two. i've got 27 kathy yeah, that sounds right, because I've counted it before. So um, I knew the number was 27. I just forgot to um, state that it was the two foremen and the superintendent from the highway department. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris, is your hand up again, or is that from before? Yeah, no, my hand's up again. Uh, Chris Clement, Morristown. Um, so again, they, I mean, we're talking about non-union employees now, but, um, again, before with your exchange with Tom, um, the conversation kind of reverted back to, uh, union versus town, um, negotiation. Again, I just remind everybody that the longevity pay policy really was intended for, uh, equitable, um, compensation for non-union employees. So I'm not entirely sure why the conversation keeps kind of veering off toward the union negotiations. I would say um, one other issue that I have with um, the discussion of the select board kind of being on par with, um, you know, part of the uh, negotiation process is that, you know, personally, I just recently met two of the uh, select boards on my leaving. Um, select board members and after you know several years of my full-time employment here at the town uh, they didn't really know who I was so um, that being kind of another issue I would just say that um, really the non-union employees need to be advocated for and we need to be kind of talking about them when we're considering the longevity pay policy because that's really who it was intended to protect correct thank you Chris I, I would just add, Don, that, you know, when I came on board back in April, I mean, it came abundantly clear to me um, as the, um, you know, union contract for the highway department was going to expire on June 30th and we started talking about this longevity pay policy that the sole purpose of that was to bring parity to non-union employees. Yeah. so that uh, everybody was going to be treated equally, that they were equal under the law, not special under the law, and that was the mm -hmm. sole purpose of it. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, I am going to move on if there's no more discussion. Come on up. Jan Paris, uh, my question is not really understanding how this works, but Am I understanding correctly that there are people that work for the road department that are union and coworkers that are non-union, they're working side by side? Is Correct. Our, super, our superintendent is non-union and our two road foremen are non-union. Okay. I believe that's correct. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Everybody else is unionized. Everyone else is unionized. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Tony, come on up. Yeah, Tony Cody. Uh, so, so it's no secret, I guess, the admin here and 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 this building is going to go union. What's what's going on with that? Uh, I will just say I had a feeling this was going to come up. I, I um, unfortunately some information got out there that shouldn't have gotten out there. Small town. It is. It's also. Yeah, it's also, I mean, you can smile and laugh, but it's inappropriate that it happened. It's not right. It shouldn't have happened. So Don't bother me. I'm a union guy, so. I, well, so am I. But as union people, we know things should be done but there, properly. They should and be they talked about. It shouldn't be. Can I answer your question? So things should be done properly, not improperly. So okay. I never took 
any great pleasure in the fact that somebody on the other side of negotiations did something wrong. Things need to be done correctly. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say on that right now because I really can't say anything else. As you, as a union person, you know I can't and I'm not going to. Fair enough. So I am going to move things forward. Um, can I, Kathy Chafee, can I have a quick question just before you move off from that? Yeah, so, okay. Kathy. Okay, I don't know anything about unions. So if for the people that don't, are you not allowed to, to um, I don't know how to word it. Are you not allowed to tell the taxpayers that uh, somebody in the town wants to go union? Um, uh, and it's just, I mean, thrown at them at the last minute. I, I, I'm not saying I'm for it or against it. I just don't understand the rules on that, on putting it out to the public. What we can say is that we have been approached about the possibility of some of our non-union mem non members unionizing. And that's really all we can talk about right now, Kathy. And that's really as far as the process has gone. Well, no, not really, because you just said that you've been in uh, contract talks. So no, no we're no, not no. in contract talks at all. <laughs> no. We have been contacted about the possibility of non-union people unionizing. That is not contract talks no. at all. There's no negotiations going on. I, I, I I'm. Yeah. I'm being okay. to say more than I need Fine. to say, so I'm not going to say any more, and I'm going to kind of end this discussion because it's it's an. In, I'm sorry, Kathy. It's an inappropriate no. discussion. No problem. But I, but I understand your question. I do, and so with that, I'm going to move on to number nine and uh, <laughs> human resource director update. So I, I just wanted to, um, so I'm going to, I had a plan as to the information that I was going to share sort of before my departure, but I think I'm going to just keep it. Um, I just, there was, there's been a lot of work that I've done over the last, you know, the seven months that I, eight months, seven months that I've been in this position. And so I just really wanted to share openly um, so that our community knew um, the importance of the HR department. Um, and uh, just to make sure that the select board moved forward with um, some of the projects that I feel are very, very important for our town, um, money, you know, for savings for the select board and for the employees. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to cut it short, but um, one of the things that I would just really like for, you know, the future HR director or the select board or the administration to truly consider um, is the health insurance plan that's provided by the town of Morristown. Um, I started doing some research a couple of months ago and then just kind of get, kept getting pulled off from it. Um, I really feel that um, it should be a number one priority for anyone coming into the HR role. Um, most places provide two and three um, insurance plans. Um, for their employees and sort of um, gives them the opportunity to pick what works for them. But I also don't think that this has been done in, you know, 20 years because there hasn't been the staff to, you know, keep up with all the, the needs. So um, I do truly believe um, with what I've seen in the research that I've done and um, from historical places that I've worked where I have been able to save an organization, you know, 50, 60, and $70,000, I do feel that um, there are some major potential for savings. Um, so I would just like for the select board and the administration to not forget, um, you know, that that is an area of saving. Um, I guess the other thing is just some of the policies that I've wrote over the last um, seven months, the personnel policy, it really had not been updated, thoroughly updated in a very, very long time. And now it includes a number of areas that are very important to um, legally protecting the town. Um, you know, the nepotism, nepotism policy, the drug, the vehicle usage, um, you know, all those things that just kind of sit there idle and don't get updated can, you know, they can um, be a disadvantage for the town. Um, the other is a travel policy. A travel policy did not exist. There wasn't a reimbursement um, structure 
um, to that. So, you know, these are all things that I've done. And these policies are sort of sitting in the HR office waiting to be presented to um, the select board. So I just don't want that work to go. Um, I just don't want it to sit there for another 20 years. So I'm, I'm really hoping that somebody can take my work and move it forward. The hardship policy. Um, so I think it's just like that's the stuff that I wanted to just share um, and make sure that those things keep moving forward. Um, and then I just wanted to really thank uh thank the select board, thank uh, the town, um, the community for allowing me the opportunity to uh, serve as the uh, HR director. It's been a pleasure and I'm going to miss working with everyone and I can just say that there is this incredible uh, group of employees that work for the town of Morristown and um, some of the, the finest professionals that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. So um, just really going to miss everyone. Thank you, Paula. Um, thank you very much for, for bringing these policies back um, back to us. I, I do have a small stack of papers at home of policies that you've presented um, that in particular, I remember the personnel policy and the hardship policy that we never got a chance to act on and um, but do appreciate all that you've done. We're going to miss you. We're going to miss having you around. And I was going to save this for, I was going to save this for select board comments, but I'll just say this right now. It was suggested at the last select board meeting that our HR director is a non-essential position. And I just want to say, I do not believe that. And uh, nor have I ever thought that. And uh, I hate to think that this town might find out just how essential our HR director is here in the in the next little while. So, um, thank you so much for all that you've done. All the best as you go forward. Good luck, and um, hope to see you around. Yeah, thank you. I um, yeah, the hardship. I want to just um, emphasize on the hardship uh, policy. Um, uh, that that was a something that was very near and dear to my heart, and uh, I knew that it was really important to several employees and to the select board members at the time. And uh, I am going to share all that work with you um, because that hardship policy. I really do think that it will financially. I think it's financially responsible, um, and it actually does protect the town. Uh, and I think that it provides what the employees, what the use of it is, you know, um, for. And, you know, the policy that I wrote um, outlines how you request it, how it's approved, um, when it can be used, how it's paid. So all those things um, that become very important. And I appreciate the uh, comment about the non-essential because um, I think that I'm an essential employee. And I think that, you know what, um, I think you need to just please, you know, re always consider uh, backfilling that HR position because it's truly important. And I'm not saying that from my point of view. I'm saying it for the town and for the select board and for the employees. Um, it, it, it's a, it is a, an essential um, position. Thank you, Paula. You're welcome. Thank you. Laura, Chris. I'm good. No, I'm good. Yeah, I just, uh, I just want to say um, I want to thank Chris, Paula. Actually. Chris, can you identify yourself, please? And yeah, Chris Clement. And in the um, future, just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to um, thank Paula uh, personally, really, but I guess I'll direct it to the select board. But I just want to say that she has been um, nothing but kind, compassionate, and extremely professional um, in all of the work that she's done. I can say that uh, my last couple of weeks leaving, she made that uh, very. Uh, comforting and easy to me and I really do appreciate that she was a sounding board for um, and non-judgmental for all of the issues that I kind of brought to her so um, I want to say also that um, my feeling too is that the HR director is an essential posi uh, position um, and that uh, it's I'm sad to see her go uh, leaving from the town um, and that she's just done a phenomenal job um, I'll also say that the uh, the new uh, just a second, her uh, health care or health um, insurance policy, the new position that I took, um, they, I can just confirm that they did offer me um, three different health care plans um, that I could choose from. 
Um, so I think that the work that she's doing there is really important too, so that it's on par with um, what other people are receiving in the private sector. So I just want to say personally, thank you, Paula, for, for all of your work. I wish you the best going forward. Um, and uh, you're a wonderful person. Thank you. Thank you, thank Chris. You, Chris. Thanks. I, I did know that. I did know that back to you, Chris. It was a pleasure. Um, and I wish you the best of luck in, in uh, your, uh, your new position as well. Tommy, Vermont. Yes, um, I'm just ho hoping with the transition. Could you identify yourself, please? Oh, sorry, Nancy Donovan. Um, I would just like to say that I hope that the employee insurance won't be dropped this year, uh, that they have a not only a chance to um, pick from a plan, but also that we do negotiations. So hopefully we don't have a 25% increase in cost for our health insurance for the employees. Thank you, Nancy. Chris, your hand's still up, but are you are you all set? All set, sorry. Okay, great. Any other discussion? Oh. Laura? No, good. Okay. Old business. Do we have any old business? We don't. Approve the warrants. To entertain a motion, I would make the motion to approve the warrants. Do I have a second? second? So we have a motion by Chris, a second by Laura. All those in favor of approving the warrant, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Department head reports. Uh, Kevin Burrows, the highway superintendent. I'd just like to report on our gravel pit activities. For the last couple of weeks, Mr. Percy's been in there making road sand, crushing gravel. We've um, just put a bunch of that new gravel down here in the Oxbow. Um, it's very nice material, packed in very tight and hard, so everything is looking up in that category. Was that in the parking lot area that they were yes. talking about? So the uh, trucks can turn around there now without sinking. Is that the correct? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's great. So are the barricades down at the Oxbow now? They're down right now, but the road close sign is still up. Okay. To Karen, allow you, it to pack. Would you talk a little bit? Um, let people know that um, the gravel that we are uh, have placed mm -hmm. down there is covered under FEMA expenses as well as the equipment and time? Correct. Everything that we've done down there is has to do with that flood and FEMA will reimburse the 75% um, and the state kicks in another 7% um, and they pay us at a rate for our equipment specified by them. So our, every truck that was working down there, every person that was down there, the loader, the grader, the roller, that, that was all, it would all be paid back to us by FEMA. Right. Our gravel and including and, the gravel, yeah, including, including the gravel. The gravel, that's the gravel great. is at market price, even though it's not costing us market price to produce it, they will reimburse us at market price at the 75 percent. So, we're actually going to be making money on the gravel, right? And had we not done this at this point, we would not have had that reimbursement, correct? Right. And status wise, where are we now with? Your work is completed down there, is that? No, we still got a little bit of cleanup around the edges. Okay. Um, we've still got one hole to fill over in the back by the uh, the back gate on the right-hand side down over in the lower section. Yep, yep. Um, I've got to get seed and um, seed. mulch down. I did say that that swing set was still over there. Did we remove that rubbish or will the, that be removed? There's a group, from the way I understand it, coming in this weekend, a oh, group of volunteers cleanup. that are coming in to clean up around the edges. Okay. And and bring in we've got dumpsters coming in that they're going to fill up yeah is that the green up group yes yeah. trisha's kind of trisha's yeah. kind of involved in that. That. okay just curious yeah i just saw some odds yep. and ends and stuff and then and then we'll be kind of in neutral for until we make other plans correct correct okay kevin i just want to say thank you for yeah, thank all you. the work getting do hamill going all the work on the oxbow and it's been a pretty crazy summer. We've all been. we've all noticed, and uh, thank you for the work yeah, that you've done on the roads. It was quick. It's I know quick. it's not all done, and I know you know it's not all done, and we all know there's more to be done. There's but thank you for more to be done. Thank you for what has been done. All right. Thank, thank you. you. 
Other department heads? Police, uh, police, police department, real quick. Uh, on August 30th at 6 p.m. in this room, we are having a community forum on crimes and concerns in Morristown and kind of the path for, uh, moving forward. The state's attorney is also going to be here. We've just experienced a significant amount of burglaries and thefts, mostly in the more so village area over the last two and a half weeks, and it's affected a lot of businesses in town. So we're hoping to get everybody together, including the businesses that night to, to talk about it. Just kind of have a, like a round table. What, what day was this again? Wednesday, August 30th, 6 p.m. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. I have a few people, not a lot, but not that I've run into that many people lately, but they've been talking about it as well. So thank you for that. Oh, Bill, any, anything more to say? Okay, great. Thank you. TA report. So August 26th is the Green Up Day. It's made up by volunteers. They'll be down at the Oxbow in the morning. I believe it's a 9 a.m. start time. Other than that, I don't... I mean, there's a bunch going on, but I don't anything so really. So this Saturday then. This, this Saturday, August 26th. With Correct. the intent of cleaning the Oxbow in particular. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And I believe they're going to hit the rail trail areas, like around the kiosk in that that area as well. Great. So. It's a, it's part of the uh, flood relief, so it's a service being put on by the folks, all because of the flood. And they're going to put two huge dumpsters down there and clean up all on the the river bank. So be Great. good. That's really great, good. yeah. Select board concerns, Laura. Um, well, um, I hope everybody is going to join us on Thursday, your last opportunity to talk the budget and questions about the article regarding hiring or changing over to manager. So I think it's important. Um, we'll have a moderator of some sort? Yes, Shap's gonna do it. Oh, Shap is? Oh, yep. He gave yep. in. Uh, yep. So it will be a moderated. Um, again, it's, you know, this is a big vote. Um, so this will be your chance to ask questions. Um, and again, I hope um, that, you know, I won't say any more, but I hope everybody joins us for that. And um, that's all I'm gonna say rather than offer my opinion or any propaganda. Chris. Um, the, uh, you know, as we're saying our farewells to uh, Paula Beatty as our human mm -hmm. resources director, um, I think, Paula, you know exactly how I feel about the work that you've done um, and the benefits <coughs> that you've brought to um, our community and staff. Um, we have talked about it innumerable times um, so I uh, would rather not repeat myself again, but you know um, what you've meant to this community and, and I certainly appreciate all that you've brought to the table. And I think, and I think it, it's a good opportunity to you know, point out that you know, our other department heads that um, bring it to this community um, every day. You know, between police and EMS, and highway and fire and town clerk's office and the uh, rest of the folks that that come to work uh, every day and night to serve us. Um, I think that we owe them a debt of gratitude too and um, just want it to be known that um, you know we really appreciate all the work that they do. Absolutely. That's all. Well, <clears throat> one of my issues was addressed earlier and Laura just addressed another one about the information meeting on Thursday. And, so the only thing I'd say is please get all your neighbors and friends out to vote next Tuesday. There are, you know, there's a few thousand people that haven't voted on these votes. So please get as many people out as we can to vote next Tuesday. Do we have a, sorry, a minute, or do we have a count of how many or ballots are in? I, I have no information on that, no. Okay. I'm not involved in that. No. Yeah, last time I checked, there were 479, but that was a week ago. Great. Okay. There's a lot more votes out there. Community comments. Okay. I'm looking at you, Tom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really don't have much. Uh, Introduce at yourself, all. This, please. Like Tom Cloutier at Monaco. The, the one thing I would like to say is, 
is maybe put it on the agenda sometime, is the uh, executive sessions that you have. I know you had a problem with them, somebody, uh, whatever. Uh, New Massachusetts and New York both have minutes of their executive sessions. And in fact, in some of them, they're, they're open, uh, they uh, are, are available for the public to actually see the minutes uh, on certain occasions, you know, uh, which, which I'm sure you would know that uh, when a motion was made or when some decision was made, uh, Vermont law, uh, you don't require minutes, but they don't state that you don't, that you ca cannot take them. In other words, that's up to you folks. You could take minutes of an executive session, and if you decided uh, that you wanted to, could make the, those minutes public. It would be up to the board to decide that. Most would not be public, of course. But I think you do a lot of executive commission, uh, sessions, and, and I think it would be helpful to have somebody take minutes for those, just for, uh, for a better word, for transparency for everybody, just to make, you know, to make everybody feel better. Like, again, I know the state says you don't have to, and, and it, but they also state you can if you want. There was something maybe on the agenda or something that you could discuss. And that's all I got for today. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Kathy. Uh, Kathy Morrisville. Um, I agree with Tom, and I, I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong, and I brought this up at a couple of meetings ago, and Judy also was kindly to email me a few times. Um, we went back, and I mean, um, yeah, Judy, we went back and forth a few times. Um, so I'm still confused, and I would like to sit down. I don't have the book in front of me. But to go over that and, and, and explain it so people do know, but I'm still confused by Judy's responses. So I do agree it should be put on the budget so people totally understand what the law reads. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Any other community comments? Can, you, can I just say something? Yeah. Kathy, just come in and see me and I'll walk you through it again. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, but Here. it's Kathy Chafee, but it's it's just not me, Judy. I think it really needs to be public. And if you even took twenty minutes, I'll come down there in person, and Tom, and I'll I'll and we'll go over it. I think if you even took twenty minutes, it would make a difference to people. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. I just want to say, if for anybody who wants to do a little research, um, it's. Uh, the executive session is very clearly outlined um, in the state statutes guide to meeting open meeting laws VSA uh, 313 <coughs> lists everything here so and anybody is welcome to read my little copy here but just FYI thank you Laura uh, yes and uh, sorry Kathy Chafee again but it does stay in there. There's some things you don't have to tell us, but it does state that you do need to, and, and it's very confusing if all of you go in there and you never have a vote on every executive session that you have, you're telling us you never vote on anything because in there, in, that, in those rules, it does say you, you do need to say something. It can't just not be totally private. Thank you, Kathy. I, I would just say in my uh, tenure on this board, we've never voted in executive session. So, Chris. Sorry, I, don't, I don't mean to be a pain. I just wanted to um, ask like a clear, uh, clarifying question. Um, I know one of the town people had asked if, um, as far as the highway department goes, if the um, if they have some people who are union working along their co-workers who are non-union um, and it was said that they were um, that wasn't my understanding is that's not actually the case um, the people who are exempt from the highway union are foremen and supervisors 
uh, the people who are included in that union are the are the other people in that highway department. So it's their title or their position that excludes them from being part of the union. It's not like one peer is union and the other is not. So I just wanted to clarify that. That's what we said before. So thank you for that clarification. Right. Okay. I am going to move on to other business if there's no other comments. Okay. Other business? So I would uh, move to, speaking of executive session, um, I would move to enter into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of labor relations with employees to the body will clearly place a town at a substantial disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 I would go on to move to enter into executive session to discuss labor relation agreements with employees under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1B of the Vermont Statutes to include Interim Town Administrator Jason No, Human Resources Director Paula Beatty, and Tina Sweet, Finance Director. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Thank you very much.